Hello everyone, welcome back to Draco's Games and Cosplay. I told you I would have a new game for you today. I will be playing Don't Starve. One of the most unique and addictive games I've ever tried. It's completely randomly generated and the aim, as the name says, is Don't Starve. You are put in the world on your own and you have to survive and you have to thrive. You have to collect items like sticks and grass. You have to forage food and hunt animals like rabbits and birds to get meat. And then you have to try and keep yourself alive. So what we have here, this is called Reign of Giants. This is the expansion for it, where they added even more ways to kill you. Because, let's face it, this isn't designed to be an easy game. It's designed to test you. So, we will see what fun we can have. So, we can get rid of that. That was me testing to make sure this recorded okay. And you can see here, this is the second character, Willow. I have got to 153 days on this. This is vanilla mode. This isn't with Reign of Giants. So, it's doable. It just takes a lot. So you have all these different characters and each come with their own perks and disadvantages. Uh, and as a little fun thing, all the characters begin with W. So you have Wilson, the scientist. He can grow a beard which can help keep you warm in the winter. And you can also shave it to get beard hair. Willow likes fire. Wolfgang, he eats more and he grows stronger. And there are so many others. There's even a couple that I haven't unlocked yet. So, we will start with the basics and we will go for Wilson. I will be playing in the Reign of Giants, which adds so much more content. If you were just starting this game, I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend learning the vanilla first and then try Reign of Giants. So in the world, you can modify everything. You can modify the spawning of fruits and all that, or make the nights longer if you want a tougher game or any number of things like how often enemies will spawn and that. So you can change how easy or hard you want the game, but we will just stick with the basics. Wouldn't want to make it too easy on myself. <laughs> Another thing is the artwork in this game. It's almost... So this is Maxwell. He's the bad guy. He's the one who put you into this nightmare. He's the only character without an, a W at the start of his name. So, if you have a look at our map, you can see I'm on the border of a grassland area and a savanna. As I said previous, completely randomly generated. When you first start, you have to just try and forage the basics, like your grass and your twigs and... Ooh, my road. So we have rabbits over here. We have more grass, we have rocks, which you can start uh, mining once we find some flint. Berries! Your first few days you will just be surviving on berries and carrots. Oh, there's some flint, very good. Just what we needed. Now while you're playing, you use the normal W, A, S and D to move. 
and you can click on things to work with them or you can just press spacebar which activates the nearest thing depending on what you're holding. So now we can go over to tools and first off we need an axe and then we just need one more flint like this one here and we can make a pickaxe very good so now we need logs and we need some stone and then we can make our fire pit but as with most games of this sort of style the most important thing is location 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 a good place to try and create your main base as such is near to a savanna area with a load of beefalo because they will provide you with a constant supply of manure which is really important for various things like creating farms and fertilizing them and then also putting out fires which can happen during the summer months when it's a lot hotter so now we can equip my pickaxe brilliant animation for that where he jumps in the air right so we have our basics and if we look in light I need more rocks to build a fire pit you can build a basic campfire which will last most of the night um, if you keep it uh, with enough fuel going or you can build the fire pit the second one and that's a permanent structure that you can just add fuel to it every now and again and then it will it will reignite so that becomes a constant first item you need ready for your main base so there is an absolute load of rabbits in this savanna area which is a good start but i'm not seeing any beefalo so we what I am seeing is that that is a gold mine break that and you get gold nuggets and the gold nuggets are very important for making some of the beginning structures you'll need for your base Oh, it's getting dark. So you have your your day cycle clock here. The yellow section is your daylight hours. The red section is dusk. And then the dark blue is your night. And here you have your health. Sorry, no, your hunger, your health, and your sanity. Yes, sanity is a real thing in this. You're on your own, there's monsters everywhere, the world is out to kill you. It does claw at people's uh, minds a fair bit. You can die from, obviously, your health depleting. Uh, if your hunger depletes, you will constantly lose health. However, if your sanity depletes, the more your sanity goes down you start going insane and the world around you will change uh, normal creatures will become more terrifying and monster like and eventually start attacking you and creatures will spawn out the shadows it's terrifying this right here this is a skeleton this is the skeleton of another adventurer who uh, fell victim to this place. 
in game it's called a boon and when they spawn they will spawn with items around them oh don't want to go near them those are clockwork chess pieces right so it's almost getting to dark sinkhole wow this is an okay area for spawning in so it's getting dark i haven't found the beefalo so i will just build a campfire which only uses a uh, some items and is easily replaceable Every each character has their own words for describing everything and examining everything and they don't have voices in this you have instruments um i'm not that good at identifying instruments so i don't know what uh, all the different sounds are but each character has their own instrument to represent their voice So we want to be eating a little bit, so I will take these berries and I will cook them. So cooking them will restore a bit more hunger. And then you can just right click and you get a green flash and your stomach goes up. So that is the absolute basics of the game. You don't have to sleep. Um, but sleeping is a good way of restoring your sanity. You can make yourself different bed rolls, and the day, and uh, we'll skip forward to the next day. You will heavily restore your sanity. Some of the bigger camp rolls will restore a bit of health as well, but you do get really hungry from it. Yeah. That wet puddle there is a mini glacier, which is basically a big uh, pile of ice. You can mine that and get ice for various things like an ice box. Right, that's a mole. You move faster when you're walking on the path rather than just on ground so really I am just hunting around to try and find a savannah area because through the there's all four different seasons in the game and different food sources become unavailable during the different months um, I'm pretty certain one of the months rabbits the rabbit holes will cover over spring thank you no that's when they would come out we'll find out um, in summer your farms will not grow unless you fertilize them Whereas in winter, they just won't grow full stop. So it's all about trying to balance the different food gathering methods. Ah, there's a nice pile that's uh, still formed. <laughs> that is an eye bird. They will attack you if you get too close. Oh, there's a whole host of them. And they're... Oh, tall birds, they call them. Sorry. Whoa. I wasn't going for your nest. You ain't got any eggs in your nest, so why would I go near it? As I said, they do try and attack you if you get too close, but their nests can have these blue eggs in them, and you can... I don't know you can uh, grab the eggs which will make them attack you and chase you permanently uh, and the eggs are really good for feeding but you can also hatch yourself a tall bird that is a wormhole which you jump in and it will take you to anywhere it'll take you to another wormhole somewhere else on the map but it could be 
anywhere. And they also drain your sanity for jumping in them. That is a swamp land. If you're stood in there, these huge tentacles can shoot up out of the ground and attack you. And they hurt a lot. But they do drop a really cool weapon called the tentacle spike. Wow, that mole died quickly. And he dropped a morsel. Morsels are like the small version of meat, which your smaller creatures will drop. Uh, so there was nothing there. It's all that area. That was there. Now I didn't. I explored all the upwards area of that savannah, but I didn't explore the downward section so there may have been more there one thing with this game you'll have a huge biome to explore you'll go one way trying to find something won't find it and then the moment you start going the other way You'll find exactly what you were looking for. Literally five steps off the screen. <gasps> Always the way in games. So these are seeds that you can plant in your farms when you get one. Right, getting dark again. No, it doesn't look like there's any beefalo in that biome. But that is quite a small one. So, it's re really we're at the point where you have to decide do you want to compromise and just build your base? Or do you go for a massive hunt? Oh, green mushroom. And try to find your ideal location. In this sort of game it's better to hold off and try to find your ideal location. As I'm sure all you house buyers out there will uh, verify. Yeah, so that's a dead end there. All these birds you can catch or they, they will fly off if you go near them, sometimes dropping seeds in the process. But now that sound there was a spider. Yeah, they are spiders, aren't they cute? They drop monster meat when they die and sometimes silk or spider glands. The silk you use in a lot of recipes for making wearable items. <laughs> These are pigs. The pigs are actual bipedal creatures. Oh, getting dark. That annoyance there was a was the turkey or I think it's a turkey. He will uh, spawn out of a berry bush and then run around eating up all the berries. Uh, there's more spider sounds. Now I can't make many items at the moment because I need to start building my main base so that I can make the first science machine which is called the science machine and that unlocks some more recipes for me to make and then from there you can go on to make the alchemy machine which unlocks even more recipes and then you can start building 
Don't you dare. That's it. Keep on walking. Oh, is he young? I would have thought he would have attacked me. Right, so we'll eat that morsel. There, there's the pigmen. They are awesome in a fight. They're neutral, so they will attack uh, spiders like that. So uh, that was the monster meat I was talking about. And that's some silk. Now the monster meat isn't very good. It's poisonous to humans. However, you can, when you catch a bird, you can put it in a bird cage and then feed it cooked monster meat or any meat and he will lay eggs for you. You can also, yeah, you can also, oh, that's a vulture. You can also use them in cooking recipes. You can... Ooh! Marble and a pickaxe. Those can be broken down. Now that does appear on the map, so I'll know that's there for later. Because as you can see, my bags are unfortunately full at the moment. And I'm still hunting around for this biome. So unfortunately it's kind of the bonus and the negative of completely randomly generated stuff. You could have the best generated world in the world or you could have the absolute worst. I've seen it both ways. I've had games which has spawned me right next to a herd of beefalo, rabbits, a huge amount of berry bushes and trees and then conversely I've had games which has I've spawned literally in the middle of nowhere with no food making facilities anywhere nearby I think that is going to connect there so we will run back this way So uh, it's just a case of trying to make the best with whatever situation you're given. Now, where does this path lead? Let us follow this path, this golden path to freedom. I was really struggling with that one. I know you're hungry. I'll get to you. Don't worry. Well, that wasn't very helpful. I just led down. Hopefully this connects on to another biome. Nope. Just to the sea. <laughs> that suspicious dirt pile. You click on that and it will create a hoof print is facing a certain direction and you follow it to another one and you keep rinse repeating following them and eventually you'll spawn a creature it could be a huge thing called the coethalant if memory serves which, it, which you can kill and get a ton of meat and various items like its trunk which is useful for making warm items ready for the winter or it could spawn something called the warg which is a huge wolf that is really tough there is a lot of spiders in this area
that's a gravestone. Uh, you can dig up the grave and get some items out of it. And we're getting towards the darkness at the end of day three. So I will think I will leave this video here and hmm. see that that's an end. So I imagine that does that. There's a thing you could just see so you could go there. You could just run off in tangents all over the place and hope for the best. What's that over there? That's more greenery. Of course you don't want to make your fire too near trees in case you make a forest fire which would be disastrous considering how many trees are in that area. Right, so I will create a fire here. I will cook some of this delicious food I have made, or I have foraged. And we will see what more, hopefully, non-disasters appear in the next video. So, hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. And until I see you again, take care of each other and keep being awesome. Cheers!